fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question, and here's one that happens that these people have to face. telling you that's a mighty popular call out here in the West. At roundup time, you'll hear it on many a ranch at the first streaks of dawn. And you should see those long-legged cowboys roll out of the blankets and head for the chuck wagon. They've got a full back-breaking day in the saddle ahead of them, and they know what they need. A good, substantial breakfast. One that will stick to their ribs and really keep them feeling and doing okay. Take a tip from the folks out West. Keep on eating your weeding, and you'll be doing okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Victor. I'll Silver. Hooray! It was always noisy in the carpenter's shop at the territorial prison. Hammering on nails already driven and making their saws squeal, the men in convict strife escaped the wrath of the watchful guards by appearing to be hard at work. But there was another purpose behind the deliberate racket they raised. The sounds of their tools drowned their voices as they carried on forbidden conversations, speaking through lips which did not move. In one corner of the shop... Billy be hung a train robber under a life sentence, wielded a hammer on a rock box which had been ordered for a dead inmate. Standing beside him, two prisoners known as Big Nose and Horseface fitted a lid on the sinister box. Billy be hung was asking, Horseface, who's going to wear this wooden overcoat? Old Jake Perry. Where about to be in ship? Modoc City, I hear. Modoc City. That's where all three were set caught by the Lone Ranger. And his constant friends, Ma Hank and Uncle Homer Potts. Yeah, and I haven't forgotten them. In fact, I heard something about Ma Hank when we had chowder to him. Yeah, you did? What was it? Sorry, Sam, the trust you run the prison morgue. Pass me the word that old Jake's body is be sent to her. Landed on Signal Hill. Seems that she liked that place. Yeah, I know Signal Hill. I can't figure out the tie up between her and Perry. She always thought he was innocent. That's so old Jake told me once. He said she was the only one who stuck up for him during his trial. I'd like to drive this keg of nails into that she hippopotamus and the little monkey she married. As for the lone ranger, I'd gladly be hung if I could put him in a box like this one. The only way you'll ever get out of this place is in a rough box. In a rough box? Yeah, I wonder... On the following day, the Lone Ranger sat at a campfire a few miles from Modoc City. He held a newspaper which Tonto had brought back from town a short time before. Looking up from the first page, he said, Otto, this paper carries stories about two strange disappearances. Billy B. Hung has vanished from prison, and an express agent vanished from a train on which a Wells Fargo safe was mysteriously looted. Uh, what fellows at prison think happened to Billy B. Hung? It was last seen when he and two other convicts carried a rough box into the prison morgue. Billy B. Hung's companions and a trustee who worked in the morgue are being questioned. The warden has promised to get to the bottom of the mystery. If Billy B. Hung loose again, 
Maybe him try to kill Ma Hank, Uncle Homer. That's a possibility. Did you see Ma Hank when you were in town today? Uh-huh. Me see her. Her get fixed to very old fella named Jake Perry, who die in prison. Body come on train this morning. Hmm. That was the train from which the express agent disappeared. That may have carried Billy B. Hung to freedom in Jake Perry's rough box. Been done before. That's plenty strange. Here, Silver. Yes, Scout. Uh, where we go, Kimasabi? To Modoc City. Steady, Silver. Easy, Easy Kimasabi, fella. Our friends may be in danger even now. Come on, Silver. Come up to town. That afternoon, Ma Hank and Uncle Homer met in the kitchen of her hotel, the Henry House. The 275-pound landlady frowned down on the pint-sized but peppery lawyer who had abandoned a New York office to become her second husband and a two-gun westerner. Homer, take those guns off Prado. Which isn't fitting to go to a barrier wearing shooting iron. But, my dear, I feel most unmanly without them. I'm a personage of some importance in the world of gunfighters and must keep up appearances. Mm. Did I not lay low the notorious Billy B. Hung? Well, you winged the varmint with a lucky shot. Now you quit stealing your eastern lingo and shed those smoke wagons. You said it? Yes, yes, yes I said them. I don't get rampy now. Here, I'll hang my gun belt on this chair while we plant your old friend, Jake. Well, come on now. Where'd you leave the buckboard after you picked up the rug box at the depot? Right out here in the alley. I hitched up the teams again. I hired a couple of fellas to dig a hole on the hill. They're waiting for us, so climb up on the seat. Right. Yep. I'm up. Now I'll take the line. You just hold those critters steady. Here I go. Oh, oh my face. No buckboard ever bucks after I get on it. Somebody's riding up the alley. What? It's Tarno again, and this time the Lone Ranger's with him. Wait, folks. We're waiting, mister. Oh, 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 Wait, pointing your guns at that rough box. Billy B. Hung may be in it. In there? That box was shipped to me. It has old Jake Perry's death certificate tacked to it. Have you looked inside it? No. Why in the world would the warden send Billy B. Hung to me, of all people? I didn't know the polecat was dead. I doubt that he is. I think he used this box as a means of escape. Ma, the masked man may be right. I saw in the paper that the vomit had disappeared after he and some other convicts took a rough box to the prison dead house. It's the one kind of box that probably would be passed out of prison without an inspection. Then let's take a look. Otto, we're getting into the buckboard. Bring your hatchet. Use the blade to pry open the lid while I cover you. Uh, me do it, Otto. Oh, if I just had my guns now. This lid been lifted before. Oh, pretty easy. Stay back, Paul Hank. There. He got lid loose. Now me lift it. Who in blazes is that fella? Uh, him not Billy be hung. Why, he's not old Jake either. Is he dead? No, but he's had several severe blows on the head. He may remain unconscious for hours. We might have buried the poor fella. Who do you reckon he is? There's a Wells Fargo badge on his coat which identifies him. He's a missing express agent. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got gold. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. 
After the injured express agent had been removed to a hotel room and placed under a doctor's care, the Lone Ranger and Tonto again met Ma Hank and Uncle Homer in the alley. Ma Hank was saying, That Wells Fargo man is being hunted as a thief right now. How in tarnation did he get nailed up in that box? There's only one possible explanation. After Billy B. Hung substituted himself for old Jake's body and was shipped out on the express car, he let himself out. Then he attacked the agent, robbed the express company safe, and made another substitution of bodies. No doubt believing that the express man was dead. The infernal scoundrel. I believe that it's his plan to hunt and waylay us. Where did you intend to bury the dead convict? On Signal Hill. That's where old Jake wanted to be put, so I aimed to let him have his last wish. More than likely that he spoke of that wish to other convicts before he died. Uh, maybe Billy D. Hung's out on Signal Hill waiting for us. Where's our friend Marshal Jim Fraser? He and a Wells Fargo special agent named Rain are leading a posse along the railroad track. Took here in the junction. Marshal Jim has a warrant for the express man we found. I see. If outlaw hide on Hill, it'd be plenty hard to catch him. Hillside's covered with brush. Him see us, we not see him. That's true. But there's a chance we may trick him into showing himself. And what we do? Listen, this is my plan. As the Lone Ranger outlined his scheme, Marshal Jim, Special Agent Rain, and a half dozen posse men rode up to a ranch house where Billy B. Hung had stopped that morning. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. As they halted, the rancher opened the door and stepped outside with a greeting. Howdy, Marshal Jim. Hi. Howdy, man. Howdy. What's the trouble? We're looking for a fellow named Irish McCune. His tracks led here from the railroad line where he jumped from a train after robbing the Wells Fargo strongbox. Now, where is he? Speak up. I don't know, Irish McCune. I don't know you. What's more, I don't like your way of talking. Rain, you better let me do the talking. I know Weston. Yes, and I know Crooks. I knew McCune was a thief the first time I saw him. All right, Rain. Now let's find out what this rancher knows. Marshal, fellow did walk in here this morning. He had his face covered with bandages, told a story about his horse breaking a leg and throwing him. He carried a green grip sack. Then that was McCune. Where'd he go? After I fed him and let him have a horse, he rode off toward Modoc City. Come on, boys. Come on, Rain. Let's look for the hoof prints of that borrowed horse. Get him! Get him! Get him! Several hours later, the buckboard bearing the rust box rolled toward the top of Signal Hill. Ma Hank and Uncle Homer were on the seat, which tilted upward so high on his side that his boots didn't reach the footboard. Ma looked back at the box as the little man cracked a whip and urged the horses on. Get along there. Oh, I wonder the box hasn't sold it off. Have you seen any sign of Billy B. Hung? No, none at all. I feel like a clay pipe in a shooting gallery. Where's Tonto? Oh, he slipped off into the brush when we started up hill. I don't reckon he's very far away now. I wish I had my guns. We're coming to the top. There are the grave diggers. We'll be lucky if they don't plant us. Howdy, Homer. Hey. Howdy, Homer. I say to be alive, isn't it? It sure is. But I don't know whether I'll live. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Get down, Homer. Oh, you have to get down there. Oh, here he comes. All right, get your hands what? up. Look, the fellow with a bandaged face. What? You, you're Billy Behong. I'll be hung if I'm not. How deep is that hole, Grave Digger? Why, why, just a regular six feet. That isn't deep enough to hold all for you and the express agent in that box. All right, get in there and throw out more dirt. You savvy? Yes, yeah, yes, I'll do it. Marshal Jim, Special Agent Rain, and the posse men had halted their horses at the foot of the hill. The marshal was saying, Rain, the trail we followed from the range leads up to this hill. I don't have to be a westerner to see that. You take one man and follow the tracks. The rest of us will scatter out and ride up the hill from other side. Sammy? I understand. Come on, Joe. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Dug deep enough, fellas. Now, uh, here's where the fun begins. As the outlaw spoke, the lid of the rough box behind him lifted, and the little ranger emerged with one gun drawn. 
Noiselessly, the masked man stepped from the box to the sand and eased the lid back into place. The outlaw was saying, I'll plug you first, Homer Potts. You and your old woman helped the masked man put me in a pokey. If I just had him here. I am here. Drop that gun. You, drop that gun. All right, there it goes. Where did you come from? Out of that box. Your trick works two ways. Uh, who's coming? But the express company detective and the posse men. They're pointing their six shooters at your back. Oh, 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 oh. All right, drop those guns, masked man. I'm Special Agent Rain. You keep out of this, fella. Let me explain. No, do as I say or I'll shoot you. Very well. All right, get his guns, Joe. Right. I'll take care of the other fellow. McCune, you're under arrest. McCune? That's what I said. He's the express car agent who looted a company strong box last night. He's not an express agent. He's, He's a... no one else. Hey, son, I'm not, mister. It is a mistake you're making by arresting me. The masked man helped the express car and took me prisoner. So that's what happened. How did he get aboard the express car? Sure, and he hopped in at Junction just after my partner Steve got out. Well, that's just what I thought. Why did you stop at a ranch house and get a horse on the pretext that your own horse had broken a leg and thrown you? That was the tune of that desperado. He made me tell that story. Waiting outside he was, ready to pistol with me again if I didn't. You can see what he'd done to me face. He planned to make it appear that you were guilty. That he did. And he brought me here and met his gang. Tis a dead man I'd be if you hadn't come to my rescue. Make him give you the loot. Whose body is in that box? Mr. Rain, there's nothing in that box. Your express agent was in it. But he's now in the hotel in Modoc City, recovering from wounds he received at the hands of Billy B. Hung. And there before you is Billy B. Hung. You expect me to believe that? It's the truth. Billy B. Hung escaped from prison in that box. After it was on board the express car, he let himself out, beat the agent, robbed the safe, and jumped off. Now he's here. Maybe he is. Maybe you're Billy B. Hung. Why don't you take the bandages from that man's face? I want to see your face first. All right, grab him, Joe. Right. Right, hold on to him. I'll pull that mask off. Oh, no, you don't. You take that off. As Ma Hank's mighty blow stretched the private detective unconscious on the sand, Billy B. Hung took advantage of the confusion and scooped up his fallen gun. Uncle Homer was yelling, Watch out! Billy B. Hung has his gun again! The posse man who had grabbed the lone ranger disregarded the warning, but the masked man, seeing death in the outlaw's blazing eyes and leveled gun, jerked backward just before he fired. A bullet fanned the lone ranger's temple. Again, the escaped convict triggered his gun. The posse man jerked and collapsed at the masked man's feet with a groan. As the lone ranger jumped clear of the fallen man's body and Billy B. Hung brought his gun to bear for the third time, Uncle Homer snatched up one of the gravedigger's spades. He swung it with a howl of fury. Take this, you owl hoot! The spade missed the owl hoot's head but struck his shoulder, paralyzing his arm and causing him to drop his gun. Billy B. Hung took to his heels as the lone ranger rushed him. Now I'll take care of you. You haven't got me yet. Seeing that Ma Hank and Uncle Homer blocked his way to the horse, which he had left in the brush far down the hillside, Billy B. Hung made for the buckboard. He's headed for the wagon. I'll get some guns. Come down from that wheel. I'll let go of me. The outlaw had one hand on the buckboard seat and one foot on a wheel hub when the lone ranger grabbed him. Kicking backward with his free foot, he sank a boot heel into the masked man's midriff. I'll cross the No, I have him now. Dragging Billy B. Hung down from the side of the spring wagon, the masked man whirled him around. All right, you asked for this. Now take it now. All right, take it and Take it again. Come on. Again. Come on. Uh, Donna, I've had enough. More, Hank. Hand me my guns. Mike, I got uh, yours and the private detectives, too. Maybe I should have plugged that uh, phone cat. No, it's better this way. How are Rain and the wounded posse man? Oh, I only knocked out that Rain varmint. He should be coming, too. The other fellas just nicked in the shoulder. Here comes the marshal. Hey, there's some fellows with him. One is Toto. He's bringing Silver and another horse. Oh, Hello, Marshal Jim. Howdy, mister. I see you've captured Irish McHugh. What else happened here? There's been a good deal of misunderstanding all the way around. Rain thought I was an outlaw. That overbearing varmint would. Is he dead? No, Marshal. That ambulance. Well, well, what are you calling my wife? Yeah, that, that lady knocked me out. Uh, I want her arrested. I have more important things to do. Tonto found the borrowed horse in the carpet bag with the Wells Fargo money in it. So now I'll take McCune to jail. But, well, here comes my jailer. He's riding hard. What's up, Jeff? Let me be hung and loose again. Why? Who, who, who there? The warden of the territorial prison sent us a wire saying that some of the convicts there had confessed to nailing the varmint in a rough box that was being shipped to my hank. So I hightailed it out after I found out that she had the box and intended to bury it here. Sure, my 
right late, Sheriff. The masked man is holding Billy the hung prisoner right now. But I thought... Oh, that... oh take the bandages from the prisoner's face. Uh, let me do it. And still, uh, Tommy. Me not use knife on you. Uh, only cut rags from face. There. <clears throat> Uh, you see face now. Thunderation. It is Billy Behan. That's what I tried to tell Mr. Rain. Masked man, I, I'm sorry. Spare yourself the apology, Mr. Rain. One-fourth of the stolen money will go to you and your Indian friend. That's the share the company always awards for the recovery of loot. Turn it over to Ma Hank. It'll be useful to her in her charitable works. Rain, handcuff Billy Behan and tie his legs. Then load him into Ma Hank's buckboard. We'll have to keep him in irons and watch him day and night until the prison guards come after him. Yes, you're right, Marshal. He's the trickiest and most dangerous criminal in the West. This makes the fourth time that he's escaped from custody. There may be a fifth time. If there is, I'll see you again, masked man. You can't always win. No, but you'll always lose. Sometime you'll meet the fate your name suggests. The pole cat sure deserves to be hung. All right, come on, Tonto. Easy. Get in the keep on that. Adios, friend. Adios. Marshal, you suppose my company could hire that masked man? Get that idea out of your head. Nobody hires the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.